I have a confession to make. When I started back into school last September, I felt like a complete fraud. Sure, I was enthusiastic and eager to learn, but I was surrounded by hardworking people, people who did crazy things like do all of the readings, finish assignments before the night before, take notes in class. That's just not me. I'm what I like to call the creative type, which is my nice way of saying that I tend to get distracted easily and lose focus. But I've been through school before, and I'm living proof that you can get an undergrad degree and pretty decent grades without doing any of these things. Grades were not the worry this time. The reason I was afraid now was because I was actually trying to make a career doing something that mattered. I was confident that I could get decent grades because I'm smart enough, and I could probably even land a good job because I make good first impressions in interviews. But after being employed for a few weeks, I would be found out. They would hand me some important and difficult task to complete, and by the time I handed it in, it would be completely obvious that I had spent hours watching mindless television like Survivor and Biggest Loser. I'd been stuffing my face with potato chips, doing my nails, even cleaning the apartment, anything to avoid it, and then maybe 20 minutes doing the work. My teachers had never really seemed to realize this, but maybe I had just been lucky until now. I was sure that my employer would be able to see right through me. I've just never really thought of myself as a hardworking person. I felt like a total phony. I'd been getting away with it until now, but pretty soon, it was all gonna blow up in my face. This is how I felt last September, but today, I know better. Over these past nine months, I've learned that I was wrong, but I wasn't alone. I was suffering from a very real condition called imposter syndrome. This is apparently common in well-educated people, and it means they're unable to internalize their accomplishments. They kind of always feel like phonies, like they're just winging it. And what no one ever tells us is that most people feel this way. There's something so incredibly reassuring about learning that you're not alone in your fears. We're all portraying ourselves to be a little bit better, a little bit smarter, a little bit nicer than who we actually feel we are. But that's a good thing. We should be doing that. We should always aim to be better. If we're not, we're probably not taking enough risks or giving ourselves enough room to rise to those expectations and grow. I think that if you act like the person you want to be, you're going to become that person. All of the little things that you consciously have to make yourself do each day, they eventually become unconscious. They become natural. And to everyone around you, they just become a part of who you are. My good friend Drew once told me how he deals with uncertainty in his life. He said, if you're ever faced with a moment that you don't know what to do, just picture the person who you want to be and ask yourself, what would they do? And then do that. But he also said, don't be discouraged if what you want to do is very different from the person who you want to be. Just keep trying, because you'll get there. I also want to say, make sure that you're acting like the person you want to be, and not the person that you think others want you to be, because there's a big difference. One of the most important realizations for me came only a few months ago. I was attending this young professionals networking event, and they had hired this speaker. He was incredible. He spoke for about half an hour all about self-worth, and he told these moving stories. He brought me to tears twice. It really hit home. Afterwards, I went up to thank him and let him know that his words resonated with me. We ended up exchanging cards and making plans to meet for coffee. As that meeting approached, I was so nervous. I saw in him the person that I wanted to be. He was wise, confident, able to captivate and evoke emotion in an audience. I put him on a pretty high pedestal. I was a bit intimidated, but more than anything, I just had these grand visions of how that meeting would go. I felt certainly this guy had the answers to at least half of life's questions. He would teach me to lead, to speak, to inspire, all within the one hour that we had planned together. Perfectly realistic. What happened instead, thank goodness, was that I met an actual person. He wasn't perfect. He didn't have all the answers. He even made some pretty questionable jokes, but he was real. I ended up learning things that I didn't expect. And even better, 
he showed me that I already knew a lot more than I was giving myself credit for. I think the most reassuring thing we can learn is that we're not actually that different than the people we want to be. So another thing I learned this year is that there are different ways to add value in the workplace. I may not enjoy doing the things that I consider to be hard work, but that doesn't mean I don't work hard. I work nonstop. I had just never thought of it as work because it was fun. The things you enjoy doing, the things you produce, that's your art. That's what real important work is supposed to feel like. And if it feels like work, you're probably not making art. But everyone's art is different. For me, my art, it's blogging, it's social media communication, it's networking events, it's sharing ideas and connecting people. That's what I love to do. And guess what? Apparently those are actual, legitimate, real job skills. And I never knew that. I had spent years feeling guilty for spending more time on doing these things than on the things that I was getting graded for. But now that I was doing them, putting myself out there, I was getting job offers and I wasn't even out of school yet. When that first started happening, I thought I must be tricking everyone accidentally somehow. I mean, I was just having fun, trying to learn new things, meet new people. Why did they think that that would make me good at writing reports or analyzing data? Well, it turns out they didn't think that. But the skills that I had, those are also valuable in the workplace. It's like we've been programmed to separate work and fun as if the two can't be one and the same, but they can. Each and every one of us can do what we love for a living. You just have to find your art and go for it. So how do you find it? Well, I think we have to start creating now. So many people wait to figure out who they are and find their voice before they put anything out into the world. But I think it's pretty hard to find that voice inside that defines you if all you're doing is sitting back and taking it all in. You have to take risks. You have to hear your voice out loud before you can start to shape it. Start putting some of yourself out, and that's when you'll start to grow. No one starts out on top. Don't be afraid to make silly mistakes, because you will. But life will go on. Don't let a fear of what others might say or think hold you back. Just start today. Surround yourself with inspiring people and inspiring things, and you'll become inspiring too. It's like mental osmosis or something. For someone who struggles a bit with self-doubt, I actually do get called ambitious a lot. It sounds like a compliment, but when it's paired with that you're crazy look, I'm not always sure it's meant in the most positive way. Two months ago, I decided that I was going to climb the CN Tower on a Thursday. I was going to speak at my first conference on the Friday. I was going to climb the CN Tower again on the Saturday. And on the Sunday, I was going to run a 5K. I am by no means an athlete. So this was a pretty big deal for me. But at the same time, I pretty much signed up for it without too much thought. Years ago, I learned that I like to push myself and challenge myself. Well, I like how it feels afterwards. I've learned that there is this addictive sense of accomplishment that only comes from doing those things that deep down inside, you're not actually sure if you can do. When I told people what I was planning that weekend, I got a lot of, wow, you're ambitious, paired with that you're crazy look. That Thursday, I climbed to the top of the CN Tower, and it wasn't pretty. I was whining and cussing, and I wanted to quit from floor number three until floor 150. But I did it. And the next day, I spoke at my first conference. And I was nauseous and lightheaded, and I don't even remember what I said. But I did it. And the next day, I got up, and I climbed to the top of the CN Tower again. A little less cussing this time, and I did it. And the next morning, I got up, and I ran a 5K. I just took it one day at a time, and I kept putting one foot in front of the other. I learned to ignore that voice inside that says, you can't, and listen for the one that says, you can. Take on as much as you think you can handle. And then add one more thing. Don't let those limits you've placed on yourself hold you back. I think you'll find that you're capable of a whole lot more than you thought. This talk right here, right now, this is an example of me taking on a little bit more than uh, I think I can handle. To be honest, 
I didn't think that I might actually have to do this. I knew someday it might be nice to be a speaker. It seemed very glamorous, and I thought the process of applying for this would be a very good learning experience, but I would never get picked. But then I did get picked, and I panicked. But I'm not a quitter, so I'm here today, and if I haven't passed out yet, then that means that that sense of accomplishment is about to hit in a few minutes. That voice inside you, the one that tells you that you can't, it is a really loud voice. It's usually screaming at you so loud that you really have to try hard to hear that second quiet voice that comes from deep down inside and says, you can. It says, don't give up. Take it one day at a time and put one foot in front of the other. Learn how to listen for that loud voice and ignore, listen for the quiet voice and ignore the loud voice. Once you start to listen to it, and I mean really listen to it, that's when you're going to learn what you're really made of. And if you can't hear it right away, listen harder, because it's there, and it's saying you can and you will. So start acting like the person you want to be. You'll become that person. Fake it until you make it. But faking it doesn't mean lying. Don't lie. You might fool the first person, maybe even the second, but sooner or later, You'll be found out, and you'll forever be known as the liar. What's the difference? Well, lying means pretending to be someone you're not because of self-doubt. But faking it, that's being yourself and learning to ignore that self-doubt. Nine months ago, I felt like a complete fraud. But today, I know better. I know that I'm still learning, and I'll always still be learning. But for now, I do have a lot to offer. I just have to put myself out there, ignore that self-doubt, and find my place in the world, because I know it's waiting for me. Thank you very much.